To the same students, what more can you ask for? Couple of lessons in life. When you go to China, China is a pretty advanced country. But you must look at the history of China. Where did China come from? China came from a space just like ours here, where we are today. But China advanced in leaps and bounds to become where it was. And how did it achieve that? I was fortunate to be invited by His Good Excellency to attend the uh, Chinese Independence Day last week and speak at that. But how did China assume that position in the world? It achieved it by sheer hard work, dedication and perseverance by its own people and by good guidance from its government. <laughs> Education is a key factor for all nations. Without education, nothing can prosper. Education starts not only in the classroom, education starts at home. Your children sit here because of your education at home, your piece of work and dedication also. When they leave home, they go into a classroom. Then they are in the hands of our teachers and their lives are molded by those institutions. So if you have a bad teacher, then you have a bad student. The teachers are critical in ensuring that these young children become good academic students. And last but not least, it needs students who are dedicated, making the right choices. You sit here mostly because of yourselves, believing in yourselves and aspiring to become someone better than what you were before. Am I right? Maybe wrong. You determine your own future in life. No one else determines that. A lot of people in our society blame everyone else for their problems. Everyone else from their problems. But they always forget, always forget to blame themselves for their own problems. The choices in life are critical. The choices you make in life are critical. You choose to study or you choose to go and turn in bucket number. You choose to go to the classroom and sit down and dedicate your life or you choose to do something else. You choose to dress wisely and respect others or you choose to disrespect people. The ethics in life and the good choices in life will determine your own future, nothing else. Sheer hard work, perseverance, and making the right choices in life will put you in front of everyone else. You can be the poorest man on this land, but if you choose to make the right decisions in life, and if you choose to dedicate perseverance, coming on time, making the right decisions, you will shoot up to become a really successful person in life. There's no secrets. Those are the only secrets. A lot of people try to choose an easy way, going to the pokies house, and playing pokies and hoping they might make a windfall. Some people go and chase AIM Global, hoping that they might make a windfall. They will never make that windfall. Gamblers never win in life. The only gamble you take in life is your own guarantee in yourself. If you guarantee that, you will be able to become successful in life. Some of the most successful people in life, Einstein, everyone else, you can go and research them. You will see the pathways they come through. It's sheer perseverance and hard work. And reflecting back on a country like China, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. China came from this level to become this in a short space of time. Sheer perseverance, hard work, and the attitude of their people. The attitude of the people. When you get there, you know how to call man from Arabi Samar the street or say you miss a tromailo, yeah? Everyone picks a rubbish and puts it in a car. You go to Japan, there's no rubbish bins in Japan. The sheer attitude and ethics of a nation has put them in front of everyone else. And those are attributes we must emulate as a nation to become where we are. A lot of people, play politicians like me, I don't throw rubbish on the street. They say, why is most be filthy? Why is lay dirty? Why is this? I'm not the guy who throws rubbish on the street. It's everyone else who throws rubbish and then blames everyone else to come and pick it up. In Lay, for example, 
throwing rubbish cost me 10 million kina to pick it up. Imagine if everyone else didn't throw rubbish. A simple thing, just don't throw away rubbish, will save me 10 million kina, which I can put into education or law and order or something else. People talk about law and order. But it's the ethics of each individual. When you see something wrong, stop it. Don't go and break into someone's car. Don't go and harass someone. Don't hit a woman. If you stop doing that, in that education space, you will save the country a lot of money. It's not only the politicians, it's every single one of us. It's the onus and responsibilities of every single one of us. That is critical for us to progress as a nation. Very important. So I'm glad, I am glad that you guys are going to China. It is good for our young people to expose themselves, expose themselves to places like China and other nations. China, you will learn good values. You will learn coming to work on time. You will learn ethics and respect, the general attributes of a society that has dedicated themselves to moving forward in society. That is why, why they put themselves up there in the top, top uh, ranks of the world, just by the general attitude and ethics of the people. So I'm glad that you guys are going. It's not going to be an easy task, as a good secretary pointed out. You will learn Chinese, Mandarin. I told the good ambassador I need an interpreter to teach me so I can learn a bit of Mandarin. Because China also will become, in future, one of the most spoken languages for trade and commerce and education throughout the world. We now have English. But when you look at the population of China and India and other nations, you need to learn the ethics and the values of those nations because the world has become a much smaller world. You know now, you me at Papua Nili, maybe the PNG now, we'll be living side by side with Indians, Indonesians, Australians, Americans, Chinese. So to interact, you need to learn how they live, how they speak, and how they evolve as a nation. So when you learn Mandarin, I hope I get a lot more Chinese speakers here when uh, you guys come back, and it'll be very easy for us as government. And I'm a strong advocate that we should be teaching teaching the Indian language in our schools of excellence, the Chinese language in our schools of excellence, just like we teach English. Because all those nations are evolving and interacting, and if you're able to understand the customs, ethics, and work, then you can advance a lot, lot more faster. Imagine if you're trying to negotiate to buy a house in China, or for a job. If you're able to speak in Chinese, you'd be able to get it much more faster than someone like me who can't speak Chinese. So you'd be, have a major advantage of it, and you will also understand the psyche and the mindset of the people you're talking to. Passim Dorman and different to one one country. You like him Passim Dorman now, but you understand him nation goal, not progressive now, but you're advancing you here too, personally. So that is a very, very big thing. So these things are personal, the messages, your personal drive, the personal choices. Government has done all it can, all it can. Your parents and relatives have done all they can. Your teachers and the education department have done all they can. Dr. Weiner's team have done all they can. His Excellency the Ambassador and his team and the country have done all they can. The end result is you. You're the final decision. You need to make those choices in life that will dedicate you to becoming a better person. Make us proud as a nation. Go forth and make sure that you guys not only, people say, as uh, I think it was Dr. Cobra pointed out, people talk about jobs in Papua New Guinea. It's not only about jobs in Papua New Guinea. Once you have that knowledge, you can be able to go forth in the world. You can have jobs as engineers anywhere. When you visit Mount Isa or the mines in Western Australia, half the people working there are Papua New Guinea excavators, shovel operators, mechanics, and uh, mindset operators working in Australia. When I went to New York uh, last year, so my first time when I went there, and uh, I've been unfortunate, I haven't been like you guys and traveled the world until I uh, became a businessman, but I uh, went to New York and I saw my old classmate from late secondary school. Him and his whole family were living and working in the States. And uh, I said, what are you doing here? He said, oh, after school I got a job here and I ended up residing here. Now he's an American citizen, so him and his family work there. You have some of the best pilots in the world come from our little nation that are now flying in the Emirates and everywhere else. You have 
when you travel on the Emirates, you have flight attendants who are from the Emirates that are Papua New Guinea. If you go there, you have mechanics, you have uh, doctors. Some of the best doctors that we have are now working in Australia. So it's not only about jobs back home in PNG. That is a small-minded thing. You need to be able to go outside and be able to get great jobs outside also and bring that knowledge and the ethics and the attitude back so you can teach our countrymen a better way of living our life and helping our people by sending in the forex, by helping building houses for our people, by helping teaching your brothers, sisters, and your villages on what other countries think like, what their ethics are, what their attitudes are. Too many times now we sit in our villages, and the villages in the time of us growing up, you could go to a village and all the young people would go to the gardens and work and they'd listen to the village elders and they would, they would listen and they would work hard in the villages. Now you go back home, a lot of them just sit on the sides of the road playing cards. No one wants to uh, work garden anymore. No one wants to work garden. You go home, you say, it's only the old people that do that. So when we send our sons and daughters overseas and learn the work ethics, not only of China, Indonesia, India, Australia, America, all our partners, when you learn those work ethics and the attitude, it brings back that broadness, that intelligence comes back and we teach it back to our own people so we too can aspire and prosper and live in a better Papua New Guinea that we will own for the rest of our lives. No one else will change our country. No another man. The per people that will change our country all sit in this room today. Some of them in the forefront, uh, you people there, the STEM students in the yellow shirts going to China. The onus is on you. The onus is on you to change the country. It's something I'm very passionate about. That was why educating young people in places like my hometown in Leh is a priority for me. Because when I finish as a politician and I walk the streets of Leh, I will be able to say, yes, my city is safer, my schools are better, my city is clean, the infrastructure is there, and no one will get angry and say, when you were there, what did you do? So those are things you go to bed every night and you see, what have I done for my country as a politician, as a bureaucrat? Those are questions you should ask yourselves too, when you grow up. So, I could go on and on about this, but uh, I'll try to cut it short so everyone can, uh, everyone can have their uh, lunch and uh, move on. I think the parents would want to celebrate with the children. But government is focused on supporting this sector and since we started the STEM, STEM pro program uh, a couple of years ago, we have now sent students to the US, we have sent students to Australia, we have sent students to India, we have even students going to Fiji. We have students now going to China. I think it's the second rotation of students going to China and we'll improve that. We are now looking at sending students to Indonesia. Each country has a niche, a niche way of where we can learn from, a niche product that we can learn from. The lessons we learn from each of those countries will be able to put together and enhance our own development of our nation. So it's critical that you guys learn. It is critical that you guys learn. I'll tell you a little story. I never went to Australia until I was about 24, 24, 25. So my first time hopping on a plane and I landed in Sydney. I was in uh, Kundiawa and I took off uh, to Sydney. And I got off the plane in Sydney and I'm used to throwing rubbish out the window. Like every other person, the rod me throw my rubbish out the window. That's pretty normal here at all, man. It's bad why you put the window down, why God has said that I know said. And you think there's nothing wrong. But as soon as I got off the airport in Sydney, I realized how clean the place was. And then we're driving down the road, and I had in my hands a packet of chips and burgers that I was eating. I was a young bloke, about 24, and then I just opened the window and threw it out, threw it out the window. The person driving me nearly slapped me, stopped the car, and told me to run back and pick up the, uh, pick up the packet of uh, fries or chips or whatever it was. From that day, I never threw rubbish out the window again. To this day, I don't throw rubbish out the window. But that is what I learned by being exposed to a different world. And by being exposed to a different world, like you young people going to China, 
Learn from the experience. You learn, it has a fine tradition, a fine culture. Learn from what they can help and what they can bring back to a nation. Those le lessons is a mindset, the attitude and the ethics that has made China what it is today. And those are the ethics that will help deliver our nation to moving forward. Attitude, mindset, good choices. I hope you guys have learned a little bit from this very short uh, speech, but we politicians like to talk, so I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll uh, just uh, end it here. But the tradition that you will be learned, I'd like to once again say thank you to our Good Excellency for China, and uh, Dr. Weiner, thank you so much for this wonderful program, and uh, from our Indian representatives at he and other, other institutions, I'd like to say a big thank you to the Education Department. Thank you, Minister, you and your hardworking secretary, and all the men and women behind this very, very great program. I hope that uh, we can continue the program, and you have a commitment from our government, that this commitment, we will ring fence that uh, program to ensure that we have budget for it every year. I make that personal commitment, both the Prime Minister and myself, that we will ring fence this program, because it is a key to unbundling a lot of knowledge for a nation. When I was in Indonesia, Another lesson. These are practical lessons. In Indonesia, every single advisor to a politician sitting there opposite the room, every single advisor had studied overseas in a different university. Some at Stanford, some at Oxford, some at uh, Canberra University, and some in some prestigious universities in China and India. So they have learned that lesson also. They have ring fenced it and they send all the young people overseas to learn from other nations and bring back that knowledge back to their own country to help develop it. The universe and the world is small. Learn from it, aspire, and grow to be better people so that you can replace us one day and be here giving a speech to someone else. <laughs> Thank you, True. I think this is all about plenty uh, talk talk, uh, me talk. Thank you and a warm, warm uh, greetings. Karen Kong said, bless the call, you have to go so you go and say, look, look good, and uh, I will be here to welcome you guys back when you graduate from your program. Once again, congratulations to everyone involved.